Why not wait out here? Hey, babe, where was that? Where was that? That the, was that a text? How come it's disappeared? What disappeared? The text disappeared. That you sent me? No, that I sent this girl that we were just. Were you text. texting the wrong person? No, I was like Tony Boswell. But now I can't text her at all. Not, why is it red? Why is Connie Boswell red? I I don't know, babe. It's not registered with iMessage. Okay, I don't care that it's not registered with iMessage. I why just, is she not in, in your text at all? That's what I'm saying. It's so weird. I didn't delete it when I got out no, of No, I don't believe you did because I saw is it. Is it just in ninth grade? No, that's not it. I don't see it here in iMessages either. Fucking iMessage. Sometimes it, when it messes up, it just fucking messes up. Let me try calling her. Try calling Con Connie Boswell. I need to get iron infusions. My my iron is very 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 low. Oh, okay. That's what that explains it. Yeah. That explains it. Hello. Hi, Connie. I'm in the meeting and I'm and I tried to text you the link, but for some reason it, my messages doesn't have you listed. It says not registered with with iMessage or whatever. I don't know what that means, but I'm in the no. meeting. Uh, Maybe it, because I have an Android. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, uh, can you link into the meeting? Are you in the meeting now? I can um, see if I can get it from my email. Yeah, or you. Yeah, I think it is. I think you can get into Schoology and click on this on the class link. You can do that as well. Okay. Uh, either way. All right. See, but well, see if you can do it now before you leave, uh, while my wife's here, because I don't like talking to kids on the phone or on the weekends, you know. Okay. So go ahead. All right, buddy. Come on, relax now. I know, buddy. I know. Who's this stranger on the phone? Somebody's talking. How dare they disturb our peace in this house? Yeah, sorry about yesterday. I uh, I'll have to admit to you, I played video games all 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 night, and then I I was uh, I was not feeling good yesterday. I don't stay lesson learned. Don't stay up all. I'm too old to stay up all night and play video games. 
Oh, what a sweetheart. What a sweet kid. It's not all right. You get old, man. Things change. I'm telling you. Used to be at the sleep. I could go up all night. No problem. Get back to work. Remember um, those days? You remember those days? I used to. I very rarely was able to do that. I was able to stay up all night and then not do anything the next day. Yeah, but you remember I used to stay up all night. Oh, and then, for sure. And then, for sure. and, then, and then just go right back to work. Even go to the gym and, and work out and then go back to work. Why you were like a girl full of energy. Yeah, I guess so. I'm not going to the gym. So I'm just doing it. I'm <laughs> so are you able to join in or do, should I try to send you the link in Schoology? Um, I'm, I'm close now. Oh, okay, good. Because if you're having trouble, I can send you the link, the Zoom link in Schoology. I think it's the same link that we use in class. It should be, but there's so many different links. So many. I even have two account, Zoom accounts, which drives me crazy. The one I pay for is unlimited time. The one that the school get, has given me is like 20 minute only, which is useless for a 50 minute class. So unless I wanted to like do 20 minutes, everybody will log off and do another 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> we had to do that we had to do that at first remember i remember and yes. then and then i had then i said forget it i'll just buy one okay i i'm joining now okay good so i'm the only one so far in this one At least the internet's working. That's good. Is my hair combed? No, it's not. It's, I did try to comb it. It's not, there's not much hair left to comb as well. So thin, frail. My locks. I definitely think a, a trim is a good idea just to get the split ends and what was, oh, here we go. Are you there, Connie? Are we here? We're ready to go. Um, it's, it's loading. All right. I'm gonna I'm gonna I, I'm gonna uh oh here we go. Oh okay. I'm gonna okay. hang out so we don't get feedback. Okay. Oh, oh no. All right. All right. Did oh, it give you a way of recording thing? What did I do? I think I did something. All right, start your video because I hate talking to people without without a camera, and I'm not wearing a tie. You have to deal with it. You're gonna see. I'm on my iPad, so you're gonna get like a weird view of my face. But my face, cats. there's gonna be cats and dogs and all kinds of fish and everything. So, all right. For some reason, my camera's upside down. Oh, you don't have to worry about it. Uh, you might want it. You might want to be able to share a screen. I was. Uh, it's just you and I, so that's fine. You don't have to turn your camera on. But if okay. you want, to, if you want to show me your work, you're gonna to have to turn your camera on, right? I don't know if you want to show yeah. me your, or what if you want. Well, it's, there's no work that I have to show. It's it was just a question that I had about um, cladograms, like identifying them. I struggled okay. with that. All right, so let's let's go ahead and try to work on this together. Uh, I'm gonna share a screen. Okay. And. I hope it works. Can you see the screen now? Yes. Okay, excellent. All right, so I'm gonna go to explain everything. Okay. So now, when you have a cladogram, let's, let's start off with what we know about cladograms. What do you know about a cladogram? Um, cladograms are like uh, groups of 
individuals or organisms that different differentiate from each other? Good. Now, so there's clades. Mm -hmm. So cladograms are a, a is a you know when we when let me let me rephrase this. When you see the word this little part of this word called the gram, right? It's mm -hmm. like a, it, it's like the word graph, right? And yeah. graph means to draw, right? So so we're, it's a drawing, right? It's a drawing. It's a drawing of clades, right? Okay. And what are clades? Clades are clades are gr groups of taxa. Okay. All right. So there are groups of taxa, and what are taxa? Taxa are those in like species or. Uh, or gena, genuses, or whatever, right? So taxa mm -hmm. are taxa are are in the, uh, not individuals, but smaller groups. So so group taxa are uh, groups of like organisms. And the examples of that are species, or uh, or genus, or families. Like we could put dinosaurs on there. We can put we can call anything a taxa. That's where the word taxidermy comes from, right? Dermy mean meaning the skin, and taxa means that taking a, a, a species and just taking the skin and preserving it. So tax that's what taxidermy is. So taxa just means group of like organisms. All right. Okay. All right. So then how do we group organisms is the question, right? So the question's always been, it's been for a very long time. How do we group organisms? And up to probably, well, the late early 1800s, well, up to early 1800s, it really wasn't a, 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 a systematic way, right? It was just some expert thinking that they could just group things together because they had fur or gee, they had feathers or gee, they swam in the ocean, which led to a lot of mistakes, right? And we talked about that, like whales being classified as fish and, yeah. and a mushroom classified as a plant. That's because they didn't know better, and as and that's fine. And as as we learned, we changed the groups. That and that's fair, but it didn't really give us a lot of information, right? Uh, so we came up with this a better system. I say we, I mean humans. Obviously, I didn't do this, uh, but they're humans. Uh, humans, uh, scientists came up with a with a with a better system, and that's a system that's based on commonalities, things. Uh, we're grouping them by what the answer to how how do we group them is by what we share with them or what they share with each other, I should say. What they share with each other. So how, what do I mean by that? I mean characteristics. Another word for characters is traits. Now we've worked with Mendel, right? We've done, we've done, we know where traits come from, right? Mm -hmm. And we know we know traits come from genes, right? And we know that genes are inherited. I think we've we've done a lot of work on on knowing those those key points. And knowing what those key points are, knowing that they're inherited, knowing that traits come from genes, and knowing that we're going to group them based on traits, knowing those key points, then a cladogram is really a a, an, a, a graph, right? A drawing. 
that helps us see how things are related in evolution. Because evolution is about how the genes change over time, how the genes and therefore the traits that come after, how they change over time. You know, as free gene frequencies or allele frequencies change, we know that from Hardy Weinberg, right? Yeah. Okay. So, so when we look at when we look at a cladogram, we look at traits, and what we start with when we're trying to build. Do you want to look, you want to go over how to build a cladogram, or do you want to just try to analyze a cladogram? Um. Well, I want to have like an exact. Um understanding because i understand i'm pretty good with building cladograms but uh, yeah we can just start from there just all right so, so I can. all right so let's go ahead and do let's just do a random cladogram activity that we find on the internet and uh See if I can find. Here's a good one. Looks like it's a good one. I don't know if it's any good, but we'll give it a shot. See if I can. Can I open it? Can I download it? I don't know. Let me open it in. It's weird because. There we go. Insert. All right, you inserted it. So let's go ahead and do this activity then. Okay. All right. What is a cladogram? All right, we already went through that, right? Oh, so um, can you like zoom in a little bit? Is that zoomed in enough? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. So the first thing we do when we're trying to find it, like these are your taxa, right? So they don't label it, but I'm gonna go ahead and put a label on it. These are called taxa. So these are groups, right? So there's yeah. worms, there's worms. There's all kinds of different species of worms, right? So there's not one species of worm, but most worms share, you know, they're segmented in this case, not all worms are segmented, but let's, let's just say uh, that worms don't have legs, right? They don't have antenna, mm -hmm. they don't have wings, but uh, spiders, spiders, we know they have eight legs, right? They have compound mm -hmm. eyes and all that. Carpenter ants, we know they have six legs. House flies, we know they have wings. Uh, dragonflies, they have wings. All right. So we know what these have, and this is a very simple activity. You can get into all kinds of details and this, so this is very simple. I don't want to miss, miss, I don't want you to misinterpret stuff. For instance, ants, we're going to say they don't have wings, but actually they do during the okay. phases of their lives. All insects do, but house, uh, when they have, uh, you know, in, uh, all insects have wings at some point in their, in their life cycle. Uh, but so all ants have wings in some point in their life cycle, not whether they use them to fly or not. For instance, when ants, when they, when they uh, swarm, when they're moving to another area, they'll have wings and they'll fly somewhere else. Have you ever seen flying ants? Yes, I have. Okay, so we know that they do have wings at some point in their life cycle. Yeah. Spiders, spiders are arachnids. Arachnids, uh, I don't know of an arachnid that has wings, uh, but arachnids, I don't think, have wings in there. I don't think, I'm, though I'm not an expert on it. Uh, dragonflies, obviously, and houseflies have wings. But we're going to say they don't have wings for the sake of this cladogram, just as an example, okay? Okay. All right. So worms. So these are groups of organisms. As you, as I just said, there's all kinds of different kinds of worms, all kinds of different kinds of spiders. Uh, uh, carpenter ants are actually a specific species. Houseflies uh, are a specific species of fly. And dragonfly, as you know, is, is uh, uh, there are several species of dragonfly. All right. So let's go ahead and just do the cladogram. So worms, do the worms have cells? Yes. So, oh, I should say that the whole point is to take these taxa and compare their characters. So we have mm -hmm. to list the first step is to list the characters. So they have, they have cells, check. You know, why don't we do it like we did in class and one means they have it and zero means they don't. 
So okay. one, they have cells. Spiders, do they have cells? Yes. Well, all life as we've defined it has have cells. cells. So, they, yeah. so they all have cells. Okay. Do worms have legs? No. No. Okay. Do spiders have legs? Yes. Mm -hmm. Carpenter ants? Yes. Dragonfly houseflies and dragonflies? Yes. So they have. All right. Do worms have uh, antenna? Um, no, I don't believe they do. No, that's right. Do spiders? No. I, I don't think so. Do ants? Yes. And so do houseflies and dragonflies. And wings? Do worms have wings? No. And spiders? No. Ants? Yes. Well, we said well, they're not going to for this case. Oh, for okay, this. okay. All right. And, and dragonflies do in house. Yes. I wonder if dragonflies have antenna. I don't know if they do or not. Let me let me check. Oh, and if I'm sniffling, that's because my sinuses are really acting up because it's spring. So. Oh yeah, and I I know about. I take Flonase every night, kid. I know about allergies flies and at school the dust gets me all all uh so one benefit of wearing a mask at school dragonflies uh yeah they do tiny little baby ones do you see them yeah they're cute and you notice you notice they have they have Two sets of wings. Do you notice that? I don't. Oh, oh, okay. I was wondering what they meant by that. Okay. So, so they have two wings where house flies, house flies only, and they're also cute, even though people nobody likes them. People think flies are, are nasty, but let me tell you, if it wasn't for flies, we'd be in trouble. See how they only have what? one set of wings? Yeah. What do flies do? They eat poop and they eat dead things. If it wasn't for them, we'd be drowning in poop and dead things. Oh. All right. So, no, uh, worms don't have it. Worms don't have it. Ants don't have it. House flies don't have. So they set this cladogram up, which is why I told you we're going to say ants don't have any wings at all. Okay. Uh, so they set this cladogram up so that it's easy, right? Not all mm -hmm. platygrams are very are, are as easy. You have to actually decipher it and kind of take it apart. But they, this example is a good, simple example of how to do a platygram, which is why I thought it was a good one. I think I've done this before in, in a, with a class. All right, so let's based on this matrix, let's create a platygram. Let's go ahead and create one. So what do I, what's what would be the first thing I would do? Do you know how? Uh, draw now a that line. Let me draw a line. That's right. All right, and then what are we going to do? And then you um, start with your your eldest, your ancestor. Which... Okay, so which we start with an out group. So some group that out. some group that doesn't have uh, that has well, so all we don't have an out group in this particular example. We would have to pick an out group. So we could pick uh, we can pick anything really. Uh, and so, but the problem is that they chose this one thing that has cells. So that's kind of, uh, but we could say multicellular. So we could pick an out group. Instead of saying cells, you could say multi, right? Mm -hmm. All right. So multicellular. And, and so everything here is multicellular. So you could pick something like a protease, right? Wait, wait. Remember so... a, 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 pro, a protozoan, right? So you can add it. We can add a column here and say amoeba. We'll just call them protease. Out group and in group. That's... So an out group, an out group is just something you're comparing it to, something that doesn't have any, it's not part of this discussion, right? So it's it's <laughs> what it is, what it is is like, okay, well, we're gonna have some common ancestor with this group, but it's before long before our first trait. It has it has none of the traits that we're looking at. 
So okay. our protease is not multicellular, right? So, mm -hmm. so at some point, at some point along the line, we had, I'm going to put the traits in green. We had cells, a multicellular come up. Sorry, but it's hard to write while I'm sitting in this position, so. Does that make sense? So at some point, at some point, some common ancestor or these, these single celled organisms started to work together in a group uh, then they became multicellular. Okay. They could have been a jellyfish or maybe they were, uh, you know, a worm in this case, but something happened. And worms could have been, maybe they were some of the first creatures on land that, that were, you know, uh, were crawling around in the, in the earth. I'm not sure. Maybe we don't know what, we, we, we don't have a time machine, so we don't know what happened. But then at some point, multicellular happened and then legs happened, right? So, mm -hmm. so legs, uh, so at this point here, well, I guess, Honestly, the only way to draw this, unfortunately, it's it's kind of unfortunate. That's the only way to draw it is that we're going to have to. Mm, let's forget about protease. Sorry, I added a, okay. a level of complexity you didn't have to do. So forget about multicellular. So weren't. So at this point, after this point here, everything has legs. So over here is worms. Does that okay. make sense? Mm -hmm. they, because they don't have legs. So as you're reading right. it, these are the older ones. And this is a trait in this direction. So at some, at some point, there was some common ancestor with worms, right? They, they, worms went off in one direction and they developed all kinds of different characteristics. And there's all kinds of species of worms. There's segmented worms, unsegmented worms, too, you know, all kinds of different. There's a whole worm branch of life. Okay. But then another branch took off in this direction and that had those, everything that came after this trait, that's after this trait, they all had legs. Okay. Is that mm -hmm. fair? Uh -huh. okay, so when we're reading this, you see this is legs. So everything that we're reading from left to right, always reading from left to right, there, everything after this has legs. Here, this branch, none of these have legs, right? Why, how do I know that? There's no character little mark that says it has legs on the gram, on the drawing. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So now we have legs. So worms are off our chart. So what I like to do is I like to take that worm. Off. I like to put a line through it or, or, or check next to it or something. So legs, worms are done. So the next creature has legs. The next trait we're looking at is which one, uh, which organism has the next most, has, has shares the most in common with the organisms that are left but still is different, right? So which one of these is different? So of these five, or of mm -hmm. these four, of these four, spiders, carpenter ants, houseflies, and dragonflies. Dragonfly. Which one of these is different? Look, of these four, which one of these is different? The most different. The most different. Dragonfly. Right, so, oh, I see. Because as all of them, I see where your point. Uh, which one of these, let, let's count their similarities. This has, mm -hmm. up to this point, not including worms, this spider has the number two. All of these have at least three. Do you see that? Have at yeah. least three, three. So which one of these share the most number of characters? Let's put it that way. Oh, wait, so, I'm confused. All right, so look at the numbers. The ones mean they, they have those characters, right? Is that right. correct? 
All right, so spiders, all four of these have at least two they share, right? They share cells and they share legs. These, mm -hmm. th these three share antenna as well, but spiders don't share any of the other traits. Do you see that? Yeah. So I see your oh, point. Oh, yeah. I was looking the other way. No, that's fine. You, you're, you're, it's my, it's how I phrased it. Unfortunately, it's hard to, it's hard to, to phrase this in a way that's understandable. That's why it's, questions are so important. So, two, two, and two spiders share two characters with all the rest of these. Worms only share one character: cells. So cells are over here. So that's why I wanted to put protease. That's why I wanted to put a protease out here and say protease are, I didn't want to, I, I just decided that it was, it would be too confusing because down here would be multicellular. So they have some common ancestor uh, with protease, but then they became multicellular and off went worms and then we started getting legs and everything on this line here, everything on this line here from that one has legs. The worms don't not, and neither right. do because they're on the left. So now which one of these, uh, of these four remaining ones, spiders, carpenter ants, houseflies and dragonflies share the most number of characters. The way I like to do them is I like to add, I like to give them numbers. So what we have here is they only have the number one. Spiders have two, two traits in common. Uh, carpenter ants have three traits. Uh, Houseflies share four traits. And the last, as you said, very clear, you're right, that houseflies and dragonflies have the most number of characters, right? But they only share, they only share these, all the rest of them only share the max of four character traits. So you see here, this spider only shares two. So this is the least, right? That's the next least number of characters it shares with the rest of the organisms, correct? Right, uh, yeah. All right, so good. So they have, and what's the trait that differentiates them? What's the trait that they, when they drop off the chart, when they split, where do they split with the rest of the group? Antennas. Antennas, that's right. So they had, so at some point uh, they split off and they form these things called spiders. I wish they would just do an arachnid, but because uh, there's all kinds of different arachnids, by the way. There's there's things like uh, uh, some arach some examples of arachnids. There's scorpions, right? Uh, house a common house spider. You know all kinds of different species. But at because at some point things started growing antennas. <laughs> So, but spiders don't have antennas, so they have to be on the on the on this side of the cladogram, right? Mm -hmm. This branch would define arachnids. So, but we'll go. We'll get to that point. We'll get to that later. All right. So that's antenna. So, what's the next organism with the most number of traits that they share with others? Carpenter ants. Carpenter ants. That's right. So we have an, another group of 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 species that are called carpenter ants. And again, there's all kinds of different ants, right? There's there's uh, fire ants, there's uh, there are all kinds of different ants and carpenter ants are one of them. And they, uh, now what's the next, the next uh, trait that separates carpenter ants from, from the rest of these uh, the, or the tax on this on this chart. Wings. Wings. That's right. By the way, I keep drawing these branches up, but of course, they can go in, in either direction. I can go down as well. As there's no rule against that. You can twist this tree around. They can swivel around these things called nodes. By the way, when I say nodes, I mean these little these little red dots are called nodes. And these nodes are common ancestors. So everywhere along, every time a two branches split off, there's some kind of common ancestor that those organisms had. And if you, everywhere around there, you're gonna be able to find traits that they shared uh, with the other individuals in that clade. So, all right, so house- So the nodes, 
sorry to cut you off. So the nodes are like other organisms that share common um, traits. They are. The that's what, one. Yeah, that's right. These are the common ancestor. This is the common ancestor between houseflies and everything that came, comes after it. This one is a common ancestor between carpenter ants and everything that came after it. Not this stuff. Okay. These these creatures here. Oh, what did I just do? I can't undo it. No. I can't believe I just did that. Luckily, I wrote it down. Well, luckily, I drew it so I can redraw it. But it still sucks. Oh, wait, can I undo it? Oh, good. All right. So, yeah, protease, multicellular legs. So this is a common ancestor with everything here and everything to the right. Here and everything okay. to the right is if they share this all the traits, right? But you notice this creature here is a common ancestor for everything to the right. They all share all, all, uh, all the traits, right? Up until when they split off. So this one has has all the traits up to this point. Yes, please. But they don't have they don't have the antenna. They don't share wings, but they share everything up to this point, if that makes sense. Okay. So that's a common ancestor that they had. So they share all the traits up to that point. So these this common ancestor here, if I numbered them and I numbered them, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four. Common ancestor one, two, three, and four. Common ancestor two shares legs, multicellularness, right? But it does mm -hmm. not share antenna and wings with everything because these guy, this guy did not have antenna or wings. This common ancestor shares antenna, legs, multicellular, but doesn't have wings. This common ancestor had wings, antenna, legs, multicellular. Do you see how that goes? But then doesn't have the next trait that evolved over time. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so these common ancestors are something that, that we can look back to and say, wow, we got these traits from this, you know, great, 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 whatever. Hold on, the TV started. Remote controllers. Yeah, we were watching this really sad story, or the beautiful story, really, on, but, Barbara in Cincinnati, who cuts hair for free for kids with autism. Oh. Anyway, so there's there's houseflies, uh, there's carpenter ants, spiders, and worms, and so we got that. That's so far that much of the cladogram, and then now house uh, dragonfly. Where are we going to put dragonfly? Well, we could put it here at the end. Or we could draw another branch, whatever. It, it really doesn't matter how you draw it, the, whether you draw it at the end or you branch it off again, but we could put dragonfly here. Okay. And what is the, what is the character that, that differentiated dragonflies from, from houseflies? Two sets of wings. Two sets of wings. Now, you, to understand it, the, the cladogram, you have to remember that this is one branch of one branch of one branch. When we're talking about life, what we imagine is this tree, really big tree that has all kinds of branches and those branches have branches and there's branch, you know, it's just like a tree, right? They, mm -hmm. they keep branching off as, the, as groups, as groups have evolve and I could draw a really big tree. You can actually look them up. Uh, in fact, why don't we look it up just so you can have some perspective on what uh, the tree of life looks like that we think of. There's really some pretty cool stuff on the internet where you can go, they have some really neat resources. Let me see. So we can actually see how really complicated, look how, look how complex this tree of life is, right? So we could actually, see if I can, I don't wanna show a video, I wanna see the actual picture of it, there you go. 
So you see, this is millions of years ago. Do you see that? Yeah. And we see how, com how, how complicated, starting from bacteria all the way, I can't point at this. So let me see if I can copy it to uh, the photos and then go back and I could, just to look at it. And you don't have to know it or anything crazy like that. It just is a, is a good, it's really a good picture to look at and discuss. You'll see here that you started with some kind, we don't know what this was, probably some bacteria, some kind of, some kind of uh, single celled organism that was doing some kind of chemistry that we're not aware of. Uh, that was able to live and started life. That was over 300 million, 3.2 billion years ago, right? And mm -hmm. today, today we have bacteria. So these bacteria share all these common ancestors with this first organism. You see, we can all go back from us, from ourselves. Uh, uh, we can go back and look at a common ancestor between all eukaryotes, all organisms with with the nucleus started way back here and then we started to branch off and now today we have the fungi the plants we have uh the protosomes or proteins right we have fish and amphibians and and of course we have primates and birds and reptiles and you know primates are in the mammals so these are clades that we can circle you can circle around you can circle a put a circle around these and call it a clade, like mammals here would be a clade, right? Because we all mm -hmm. share sister, uh, uh, character traits. Amphibians could be a clade. Uh, we could do a clade that just includes uh, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Uh, we could do a clade that, uh, that's, and by the way, uh, yeah, we could do we could do a clade that circle that that includes protosomes, uh, uh, ectoderms. Uh, ectoderms are things that you know, like squids and such, right? Uh, fish, amphibians, reptiles, mammals. Or we could, you know, we could keep going. We can draw bigger and bigger clades, or smaller and smaller ones. So we can we can draw a real small one, and we could say. Here, let's circle it around primates, just chimpanzees and and not monkeys, right? Let's just surround. Let's just surround gorillas. Uh, let's call them apes, right? Apes. You see how small that clade is compared to the rest of the tree of life? Yeah. You see how closely we had a common ancestor. Now I say closely. I say closely, but I'm we're talking millions of years ago, right? Millions. Like we can't, yeah. it's, hard, it's hard to imagine that, but it's not like yesterday we, we were, we had a cousin or our, or a grand uncle or something, your grand, great, great grandfather that we shared with apes. No, it, other apes, gorillas, orangutans, gibbons, and chimpanzees separated from us a few million years ago, probably a couple million years ago. So anyways, that would be the kind of tree that we would get if we kept doing what we're just doing with, with thousands of different traits. And of course we'd add DNA evidence and all that, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and analyze. Now, now that we've drawn one, let's go ahead and analyze it. According to your, to your cladogram, which two species are most closely related, uh, worms and spiders or worms and ants? Let's go back and look. Um, worms and spiders or worms and ants? Worms and spiders. Worms and spiders, right? Because they're more closely related. They share the most common ancestors. Yeah. Uh, most common traits, and therefore the most common ancestor. Worms and spiders. And now, according to your cladogram, what species are, are, are dragonflies most closely related to? Let's go back again. Housefly. Dragon, housefly. Why? They share the most number of traits. All right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? So it's making sense to you, this, this yes. process? Yes. Excellent. If a different colored writing utensil, when a different colored writing system, add a June bug to your cladding on based on its characteristics. Where would you put a June bug? 
A June bug is an insect. Wait, wait, what did you say? A June bug is an insect. So June, let's go down. You don't know what it is, but let's let a June bug does not have a vertebra. Does not have a vertebra. It doesn't have jaw. It doesn't have jaws. I don't four leg. It has six legs. It doesn't have an amniotic egg and it does not have hair. So a June bug doesn't have any of these characteristics, but it's not quite a lancet. It does have legs. It has multiple legs, but doesn't have a vertebra. Where would you put a June bug? Before. Oh, oh. wait. I, I, I think they meant to put it on the previous thing. Where would you put a June bug here? I don't know what a June bug is. So to put it on that cladogram, so I'd have to look up the characters of a June bug. So what I would do is I would look up June bug. And that's what you, a June bug has six legs. It has wings. Oh. It has wings. It's a beetle. So it has wings. It has two sets. I don't know. Does it have two or four sets? Uh, a June bug has two pairs of wings. So if we go back and we and we put in our uh, where would we put a uh, June bug since it has two sets of wings, it has antenna, it has legs, and has cells. Where would we put a June bug? It's not With a dragonfly. Dragon yeah, it would be over here, like somewhere around here, right? It's not a dragonfly, right? It's a beetle, but it does have two sets of wings. So, which are two the most two two close? Which one's most closely related to dragonfly? According to this cladogram, it would be a June bug, right? Because they share that common ancestor right here. That had all the character. This common ancestor had all the characters to the left, but does not. These somehow some trait that we don't know about separates dragonflies from June bugs. Does that make sense? Um, with the the nodes. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the nodes, you said for like using a spider as an example. Um, they have everything in common going towards the right, but with the June no bug, to the left. Has... No, no, everything to the left. So this spider uh -huh. has every everything to the left has all the characters to the left, right? But they share a common ancestor with everything, everything to the right. You see, this one, this one, this common, this is the common ancestor. All right, so let me be clear on that. Yeah, I'm, I think I, I was unclear. All right, so this common ancestor means that this is this common ancestor is shared with all the organisms to the right, everything to the right. right. The common is shared. This common ancestor is shared with them. What this means is that everything, everything from this common sister to the left, all the traits, everything shares. So everything to the, this common ancestor and everything to the right has legs. Okay. And they're multicellular. Okay. Mm -hmm. But, but to the right, you have new character traits that spiders don't share with them. We don't know. What, we don't know all the other characters that made all these splits, but we know antenna is one of the causes of the split. So everything to the right has antenna, but the common ancestor and the spider and the worms and anything to the left of the antenna, they don't have that trait. Does that make okay. sense? Yes. All right. all right. So it's excellent. See, this is what we need. We need questions so we can clarify. All right. All right, does that make sense so far? Yes, and outgroups are like the most recent and ingroups are like the- um, Are the most distant. Older. It's the most distant. It's the one that doesn't have any of the tra traits. So here's a good here's a good outgroup. It's what something, notice in, uh, a lancet is a group of organisms that don't have retrieval columns, they don't have jaws, they don't have four walking legs, they don't have amniotic egg, and they don't have hair. That's why I wanted to put protease as an outgroup because it doesn't have multicellularness. It doesn't have antenna wings or anything. I didn't like that they put cells because everything has cells. We need an outgroup. We, we need one group that would have zeros all the way down. 
So this is uh, this is their outgroup. That wasn't on the chart, but protease doesn't have any of them, but worms have all of them. So worms is the first split from the group. So, so here, worms will be the start of in-group. Right, exactly, good, I love that. I love the way you just said that. I've never heard it said that way, but that's right. Now when we look here in a different colored writing test, we'll add June bug we just did. What, what trait separates lamp in this chart? What trait separates lampreys from tuna on this diagram? There's lamprey, there's tuna. What trait jaws. separates jaws? Excellent. So it'd be jaws. You see, you got this. Mm -hmm. So jaws. What separates a salamander from a turtle? A knotty egg. Amniotic um, egg. Um, yeah, okay. Which organism is most related to leopard? Turtle. That's right, turtle. So that's interesting. If you, if you would tell someone that a turtle is related to an egg, to a leopard, people would think you're crazy. Yeah. They're so different, right? But when you compare them to other creatures, all of a sudden they don't, they're not as crazy. It's not as crazy when you look at inside the turtle. That's what people, we as human beings, we look at the outside and we look at just a few characters and we make a decision. We just make this decision because that's how our brains work and it makes sense, right? We, we mm -hmm. can't open, we can't possibly open up everything and, and investigate everything. We'd go insane. So we have to just kind of group things as we go. That's how, but we run into trouble, you know? Race is an example of that trouble. We look at people and we classify them without, but we do that all the time. Like that's what we do as human beings. It, it, it gives us an advantage. It allows us to survive. But if we're not, if we don't use our brains for uh, more than that, if we're lazy and we don't use our brains and we don't look deeper into it, then we end up making really big mistakes. So, you know, like I said in class, race is one of those things where we look at a few character traits and we, we don't look any deeper and we see the differences, but we don't really see the commonalities. And so when we look at, we look at terminal uh, turtles and leopards, they actually share all these, all these character traits. It's only hair in this, on this tree. There's, there are more differences, obviously, but it's only hair that separates them. Now we're only using one, two, three, four, five, right? Five character traits pretty much the same in the other tree we made. But can, yeah. you, imagine, can you imagine how, how good a tree we can make if we use tens of thousands of character traits, including what they eat, where they poop, where they live? Like we could start to really get a good idea about what this tree looks like if we, if we use all those character traits. And of course we can't do it by hand, we have computers that can, that can analyze the commonalities. So we have these actually supercomputers that look at thousands of strands uh, of, of billions and billions of nucleotide sequences, DNA and RNA, proteins. We look at, we put in there as well where they live, the fossil record. Like we you could put in just so many different factors. And what we find is some really good idea of how evolution who shared what common ancestor. All right, which organism's dif DNA differs the most from the leopard? Which one has the most different DNA? Are we, are we including the in-groups or are we like considering Every, the outgroup? That's a good question. Another excellent question. Wow, that's deep. Yeah, uh, you're going to have to just go ahead and just include, because of the way they phrase the question, include all of the, everything on the tree, which has, which has it, the most okay. difference. Well, then it will be the outgroup. That's right, the outgroup. Excellent. Now, I recorded this. Is this okay if I send it out to everybody? Yes. All right. So Lancelot, next. Uh, use the following cladogram to answer the questions below. 
All right. So I think you can see that, right? There's no out group. It doesn't look doesn't look like there's an out group because everything I which I don't like, they should have an out group. If we wanted to add an out group, we could add uh let's say jellyfish. And jellyfish, why jellyfish? Because jellyfish don't have a vertebra. They don't have a backbone, right? So that's what I would do is add, so this is our out group. We use an out group to compare the rest of the organisms to it, right? So that, mm -hmm. way, that way we can keep ourselves honest. All right, What's, what separates rabbits and primates and crocodiles on this, on, on this thing? Rabbits and primates from crocodiles and other, and other things. So do, let me ask you this question. Uh, rabbits and primates, so these guys, mm -hmm. from, uh, from crocodiles. Oh, eggs with shells. Egg with, eggs with shells and hair, right? Yeah. So hair and eggs with shells. Why is the tree on the um, line like that? They put, they, that's how we do it. We put, we put the traits on the line, just like we did no, back. I'm here. talking about hair. Oh yeah, you can put the 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 trait would go on anywhere along the line. It could be on any line. There there are going to be traits here between differences here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you could you could put a trait here that led to rabbits and a trait here that led to primates. Maybe here you put thumbs, right? Because all primates have thumbs, right? Mm -hmm. uh, where rabbits, I don't know what rabbits have that that trait that that primates don't have. So I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I can't think of, uh, I can't think of a trait. I don't, mm, uh, long back legs. Let them, you know, they have long back legs that allow them, you know, to run fast, right, or hop. So, this trait could be long back legs and back legs. And this, so you can keep adding traits. Every branch has to have a trait that defined it, mm -hmm. right? This, right. this, this, everything came after here had four limbs, but having amniotic legs, eggs broke this whole clade off in this direction where this clay was, uh, you know, was defined by a common ancestor that did not have amniotic eggs, but did have four limbs. You see that? Yeah. That's this this node here, this common ancestor. This common ancestor had hair, had amniotic egg, but did not have eggs with shells. It also did not have, let me use a different arrow. This also did not have thumbs and it did not have long back legs, right? So this common ancestor had hair, had amniotic, had all the traits down here, but it did not have these traits. It does not have that trait. So that's why we put the traits on the line because it allows us to differentiate between the node, which in this case I'm going to make green, the common ancestor, and everything that came after it. It's those traits because we're comparing traits, right? Which led us leads us to understand the evolutionary relationship between the organisms, right? All right, can I go on? Mm -hmm. All right, which. Organism is most related to rodents and rabbits in this cladogram. Rodents and rabbits, which organism is most closely related? Primates. Primates. Now, again, if you told someone that a human is relate is more close is closely related to rabbit or mouse or rat, they would they would get upset with you probably. They say you're crazy. But when you compare them to in, to frogs and and crocodiles, of course, were more related to rats and rabbits, right? Right. Right. So if we're going to do experiments on, on organisms to try to understand how we work, like if we want to understand how we work and will something kill us or not, will something, uh, will this drug hurt us, 
uh, how will we react to something? We're probably going to pick rabbits, rodents of some kind, right? Uh, right? Either mouse or rat to experiment with for a lot of good reasons. But certainly one of them is we wouldn't use birds because birds are very different from us. How do we know that? Because we can look at all the characters that we share with them. And we know that rodents are the most similar to us. So if we're going to use them anything for an experiment, we're probably going to use something that's very similar to us. But it depends on the trait, right? If you want to study the, the, the nervous system or the vertebra, then you could use birds if you wanted, or you could use frogs because they have, uh, well, because they all have vertebra. But you probably still want to use rabbits or rats because they're more closely related. We share a lot more characters, which means we share more DNA with them, which means it's more likely that if something kills them, it'll kill us. Something that'll kill a crocodile may not kill us because it's very different. They're very different from us. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So which organism is most related to rodents, rat, uh, rodents and rabbits? It's primates. What are the five traits that, uh, what five traits do the birds and its closest relative share? What five traits do birds and crocodiles share? It doesn't tell us. What is it? Yes, it does. When you read the cladogram, what are the traits that all that both crocodiles and birds ha have in common, but don't, but they don't share? So five traits, so what does that mean? If they have in common, it came where? Oh, wait, wait. Okay, I was reading it wrong. Okay. Um, eggs with shells. Right. Go ahead. Um, Vertebrae. That, that's right. Probably better to go in order. When Vertebrae. you're doing it, when you're doing this on a test, it's always a good idea to kind of say something, do something like, you know, vertebrae check. Uh, Does that say four eggs, limbs eggs. or legs? Four, four limbs. That's right. Four legs or limbs. Yeah, four limbs. They say four limbs because for a bird. They don't have four legs. They have two legs and two wings, right? But mm -hmm. they're both, but they're both limbs. Oh, okay. In fact, they're very close to us. So I'll show you in a minute. But what about what's another what's another two traits that they share? I can't really see that amniotic egg. Amniotic egg, yeah. Mm -hmm. It is it is difficult to say. And bony skeleton. You might ask, well, why? What do you mean bony skeleton? Why not? Well, it turns out that sharks have cartilage. They don't have bones at all. They have they have they have calcified cartilage for their skull, for their jaws and skull and teeth, but they have no bone. Is that oh. interesting? Is that interesting? It is. So, so that is that is those are the traits they share in common. Notice you did not say hair, thumbs, or long back legs, right? They don't share those. And right. by the way, we we could add some more. Like we could add here, we could add feathers, right? That would make birds birds, right? And here mm -hmm. we could add, I don't know, uh, I don't know what. Uh, what alligator? I don't think alligators. I don't, alligators don't have scales, do they? Um, I don't know. Uh, long tails? No, I don't know. I guess. 
long tails. I don't, I don't really, I'm not familiar with crocodiles uh, as well as, as I'd like to be, but so we'd have feathers would have given us birds and some kind of long tail character would have given you alligators. So there's some common ancestor between these two, but this one does not have feathers, nor does it have long, long, a long tail. Does that make sense? But this common ancestor and everything that came after it have eggs with shells, amniotic eggs, four limbs, bony skeleton, and vertebra. But they don't have any of the characters on these out on these offshoots. Does that make sense? They only share these characters. So if I circle, uh, we'll go, we'll get back to you, Clay's in a minute. Let's go ahead and, and keep reading. Which organism will have DNA most similar to a bird? Crocodiles, because they share the most um, the most traits. That's right. Excellent. And which organism DNA will differ the most from the birds? Include the one we added. Jellyfish. Jellyfish. That's right. Why? Because they're they're the one that shares the least traits. And the key is that it's the least and the most traits. I mean, I think it's obvious that amphibians and primates are very different, but as compared to fish, we're much more similar. So we're actually more close. In fact, we're more closely related. According to this chart, we're more closely related to amphibians than we are to birds. Hmm. Isn't that interesting? Uh, and I don't know how accurate the chart is. They could have made these up, but... That's interesting. All right, so let's go on. I don't know, is there more? Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this. So now let's examine the cladogram and each letter represents a derived characteristic, right? So we know that these are traits. Derived characteristic, by the way, this word derived characteristic means, derived characteristic means a trait. All traits, were derived, all traits were inherited, right? We inherited DNA, they're derived meaning they changed, something changed in our DNA that led to that. We have so many examples of that, right? People with six fingers. Why do some people, why are some people born with six fingers? Because they inherited some gene that changed from what other people have, correct? Correct. So that, that's called the derived trait. So uh, why are some people's earlobes attached to their, to their face and some others are not unattached? Why do some people taste the bitterness in broccoli and others don't? Because of some trait that evolved that mutated, some mutation that stayed in the population that was inherited, right? So we call those traits, okay? It's called the derived characteristic. Okay. So here we have each letter represents a trait. We know that we would, in the previous charts, we would put a little slash, right? And mm -hmm. we would put the name of it, but here they're just putting letters. Okay. And we, we've, we've even looked at these very same organisms, dragonflies, housefly. These are crickets and ants. They share, obviously they share a common ancestor in this chart. Then you have arachnids and then you have this worm, just like we had, talked about earlier all right match the letter to its characteristic where do you think were wings come into place where would you put wings if you're going to put it on this cladogram um somewhere between f and g no it has to be f it, the the characters these characters go they have to be either a b c d e f g or h um Oh, okay. Because that's where we would put the trait. So that's good. I'm glad you said that because I, you know what? You're absolutely right. You could, you could, they could have asked you to do that. They could have said, this, so these are points along the evolution, common ancestor. These are common ancestors. And that's what you're thinking. You're, that's what your brain's thinking because we call those nodes, right? Mm -hmm. And 
and that's what you were thinking. And if these are common ancestors, where would you put the trait? Somewhere between F and G is correct. But no, what they're saying is that these aren't nodes. These are just places along the line where these traits would go. So if it helps you visualize this, it would be these are we're trying to fill these in. Excuse me, I'm so sorry to interrupt. So, but may I interrupt for a moment? Yeah, what is it, babe? Um, so I'm in my office trying to get stuff done, and Penny keeps scratching at the door every time I open. She runs. She's messing with me. She's playing. She wants she, to play. She wants to play. Yeah, I want to play too. Yeah, too bad. I'm working. Okay, sorry. All right. So these are traits. So just like any other categories, it would be slashes. So now you have to take these traits and put them in their appropriate places in these letters. So where would you put wings? F. F, correct. See? Where would you put six legs? B. Well, count the legs on, on that spider. Oh, um, C. C. Correct. Segmented body, which means that they have sec they have sections. You divided the body into set. Not all things are segmented. So, for instance, uh, I can't remember the unsegmented worms. There are worms that don't have. They're smooth. They don't have sections. You know, ever you ever seen a worm? Yes. All right. So you know that they have little, little, uh, little divisions, little segments. Let me, mm -hmm. let me show you. So we can take a look at, at all kinds of, see the sections and even a centipede, I can't point to it because I'm on the internet. But you see how they have a bunch of little, uh, all those little legs? Yeah. Each one is a segment. And it's the same with a regular worm, as you see to the left. But there are unsegmented worms. This is, an uns this is a worm that's just one long tube, no segments. So we're used to the segments here. See, we're used to these kinds of segments. These are the worms we, we're used to seeing. And you see that each segment has its own little uh, section with all the same kinds of organs. Does that make sense? So yes. each, each section has that. But there are these things called round worms uh, that are, and flat worms. The round worms don't have sections. You can't see it because it's blurry, but it do they don't have sections. They're smooth. And flat worms don't have sections. They're flat, right? But segmented worms are what, we're, uh, are what are the first organisms that we know of they have sections, okay? They have segments. All right, so segmented body, where would we put those? A. A is correct. So if we wanted to put an out group, we could put round worms, right, down mm -hmm. here. We could have round worms down here. That would be our out group. Double set of wings. First time you see four wings instead of just two. G. G. And then it's kind of cool to think that dragonflies and butterflies have a common ancestor, right? Yeah. Versus houseflies only have two wings. And they're very, there are a lot of beautiful flies, by the way. They're really beautiful. I can show you, but let's go on. Which have back appendages, Cersei, or back appendages? Would it be? I don't, I'm not even e? sure what that means. E? Hmm. Let's look it up. I'm not even sure what that is, to be honest. I, I probably should know, but I apologize. I don't know. I'm kind of curious. Ah, these things. Not that guy. That guy's, I guess, a soccer player. But look, see, do you see the the things on? There's his head on the on the left, and mm -hmm. or its head on the left, and that it's on the back, on its very back end. It has these little things that stick out. They're they're 
you see like a cricket has it oh. kind of sticks out in the back i don't know what they used it for it looks like that one uses it to grab things it's kind of creepy but anyways which one of these have a back the back appendage e e yeah so that what does that mean that means that that something between i'm going to go ahead and do the the common ancestors in purple and pink purple here so that means that these guys these two share a common ancestor but the common ancestor did not have that those back appendages right those little things that whatever the circe or however they use them mm -hmm. ants don't have it either so that means e had to have the trait had to evolve here this at this at this point some common ancestor with grasshoppers or crickets have those th those circe and then all kinds of different creatures came from this common ancestor. Same thing over here. Okay. Now, crushing mouth part. That would be D because the um, common ancestor in the cricket doesn't have that. Nice. Either. Nice. You got this, kid. You got this. All right. Legs. B. B, correct. And curly antenna. H. Nice. Aren't they pretty? Little curly. I, I every time I draw a butterfly, I forget to draw the little curly antenna. All right. My cladogram shows evolution uh, at, of land plants. Now we're looking at land plants, as indicated by the fossil record. So now, before uh, so up to now, we've just been looking at things we can see. Now we can we have to dig into the earth to find the fossils. And now we're going to go ahead and, and find these, put these in order, right? Based on the, the common characteristics. So here, angiosperms, they have seeds. It's kind of hard to read this drawing, but the line here would be here, right? And mm -hmm. the line here would be, uh, I don't even know what, uh, my guess is that, wow, that's a horrible way of, Unless they want you to, I'm not sure. So the, well, I the know that are starting at the top. I think vascular plants. No, no, no. Always the outgroups are always to the left. Always okay. the very much left. So I'm guessing that this vascular plant goes here. It's a horrible drawing. Uh, or maybe these aren't trait. Maybe they're not. I see. I think they're just saying that. They're saying that these guys here have seeds, right? Where uh, I think they're saying that that I'm. I think they're also saying that uh, all of these are vascular plants. Here, in other words, they have they have xylem and phloem. They have things that are like our our arteries and veins, right? Uh, all these have are because so they're defining clades it looks like and they're not really care they, they really should draw their lines so it's really confusing uh, no seeds so these guys here have no seeds so this is a whole clade of organisms that don't have seeds where gymnosperms and angiosperms do have seeds mosses and ferns don't they have spores all right so which discovery would challenge the validity of this cladogram? A large aquatic vascular plant about 200 million years old. So let's go down the list of, of what we're talking. This is a very difficult question. So don't I don't even think they'd ask you this in the, in the course exam, but it's kind of interesting to look at it and, and test our knowledge. So this happened about 425 million years ago. This happened about 400 million years ago, and this happened about 300 million years ago, right? So when you're looking at these lines here, see the line, they're pointing to something. They're pointing at a spot on this, on this, on this cladogram that happened about 300 million years ago. This is pointing to a spot that's happened about 400 million years ago, 49 million years ago, and this happened about 425 million years ago. So they say the evolution of vascular tissue happened about 400 million years, 409 million years ago. Now they're saying which would, discovery would challenge the validity. That means how 
accurate or how true this is, okay, uh, mm -hmm. of what this cladogram is showing. So large aquatic, if they found a large aquatic vascular plant about 200 million years ago, well, 200 million years ago is earlier, so it means it's on this side of the tree. Not this, because to the left, it's older, right? To the right, right. it's younger. Right. So large aquatic vascular plant about 200 million years ago, somewhere, somewhere around here. Would that, would that be something that would break, that would say this, that would make this tree wrong? Where did vascular plants start? Two hundred million years ago. No, look, hmm? look at it. Four hundred and nine million years ago. All right. So now, if two hundred nine, two hundred million years ago, you had an aquatic vascular plant. Does that make sense? Yeah. Is it okay? It's okay, right? This chart supports that. So, right. what would break it? What would make this false? If this number were what? Um, like if it happened before. That's right. If it happened before, because according to this chart, nothing before this point had vascular tissue, but this, but this a happened after vascular tissue. So that's okay. Does that make sense? Yes. So this one's okay. This is check, which they want to know which one would challenge the validity. See how they phrase things. They don't say mm -hmm. which one's false. They could they could easily say which one's false, but they don't say that. They say challenge the validity. So which one's which one makes this which one of these is makes the, the cladogram false? Which one makes it wrong, right? Is that correct? Do you understand that? Yes. So which one of these makes it makes it false? It says challenge the validity. All right. Mm -hmm. So a species of algae that has existed less than a million years ago, a species of algae. Well, when did algae start? According to this chart. At the beginning of like. Uh, the beginning of this chart. So older than yeah. 45 million years. So if you found one less than a million years ago, is that, is that something wrong with that? No, right? No, no, yeah. that's fine. So, I mean, you don't know, you don't know when they could have evolved. So that's okay. So by the way, algae, this, these are also, all of them are present time. So this is the present time today. Today we find hornworts, liverworts, mosses, clubs, ferns, gymnosperms. As you go back, you go back in time. So everything's going backwards to the left, down and to the left, okay? A moss mm -hmm. species has existed for less than 380 million years. Mosses that, that have existed less than 380 million years ago. No. When did mosses first start? A little bit. Um, Older than what? 409 million years ago. But if, if it doesn't, there's nothing wrong with a moss species existing less than 300 million, because we have mosses today. So there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if they would have said the first moss species started 380 million years ago, then mm -hmm. that would be a problem. That would be a problem. Oh, okay. We'd have to have mosses over here on this side of 380 million years ago. But that's not what, what they're saying. They're saying if there's any moss species could have started, it could be less than 300 million years old. Absolutely. Okay. So this is hard. This is hard to read. Don't, don't feel bad. You got the idea of a cladogram. I think you're solid on it, but you have to look at the different ways they phrase the questions. A fossil of a fern more than 425 million years old. When did firms first start? Um, a little bit after 380 million years ago. 
a little bit before 380 million years, but after 409 million, right? Somewhere yeah. in between. Here. It's hard. You know what's really hard about fossil is to think backwards because everything's backwards, right? Yeah. So fossil in a fern, according to this chart, ferns evolved, ferns came to be in between 380 million years, which is about here, and 409 million. So they couldn't be older than 409, couldn't be younger than 380. And according to this, it, what if we found a fossil is older than 425? Well, this chart's wrong then, right? Yeah. All right. All right, so this is the answer right here. D is the answer because we know ferns started in between this, this uh, in between these, this time range, right? 380 and 409. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's, the, 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 here the problem is going to be the tricky language. It's very tricky. English can be very tricky. So you have to really think about what they're saying. All right. Ooh, DNA, RNA, what we talked about, that you can organize things in. And this is the last page. And I think, I think you could get a question like this on the test. So let's look okay. at a protein located in mitochondria. Cells evolved in cellular respiration. Below is a table showing the amino acid sequence for cytochrome C in several organisms. So here's the amino acid sequence for cytochrome C, at least part of it. And here's the DNA sequence that, that led to RNA, that led to protein, right? This is the protein. So isoleucine, serine, asparagine, glycine, uh, phenylalanine, isoleucine, leucine, you know, et cetera, all the way across, just like the charts that we had used and we had done in class. And here's the DNA that you started with. And they give you a bunch of different, the same sequence, the same gene mm -hmm. in different organisms. Obviously, these might be different. There might be a difference in them. And that difference could lead to a little bit of difference in the amino acid sequence. So you got to be careful. All right. So they want you the more amino acids that an organism has in common, both type and order indicates the closer the relationship. The same is true for nucleotides. Compare the biochemical data above, which organism is most closely related to a lizard. So I'm gonna let you sit here and do this while I go to restroom. And I'd like you to, I'd like, I'd like you to analyze this, take a look at it and tell me, take a look at it and tell me what, which one do you think, which, uh, which one do you think is most closely related to lizard? Okay. okay. I'm gonna mute myself so you don't hear the dogs barking or anything, but I'm I'm gonna be here, okay? Okay. I guess I can't mute I myself. Can't. You're gonna to have to listen to everything. All right.
All right, so how do we do? Is it confusing? Are you confused yet? Um, I think it's, well, I know the ones that aren't amoeba, uh, sponge, and cat are the ones that, that I crossed out, but it's between dolphin shark and kangaroo nice good job so here's i'd like to do something that they don't ask you to do but if we were going to organize these right by a lot of different ideas other than just cytochrome c uh, amoebas are protista so they're single-celled organisms i would say this is probably if if i were not using cytochrome c okay so amoeba would mm -hmm. be the, the furthest away Why would I say that? Because I'd say it was the furthest away because amoebas are very different from, from lizards, right? Yeah. Am amoebas aren't, don't even have legs. They're single-celled organs. They don't even have multi, multi, uh, multi, you know, tissues. The next, I think, would be probably, uh, geez, I would say a worm, a, a sponge. A sponge would be mm -hmm. even uh, the next. So if this were one three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This would be eight. This would be number seven, would be a sponge. Then the next closest uh, would be a, a six. Uh, then it could be dolphin, shark, or kangaroo. Is that what you, did you get that from just doing amino acid and DNA sequence? Yeah. So if I got a problem like this, because I know that, that, evolution leads to a lot of different uh, commonalities and a lot of differences. If I'm looking at a DNA sequence, I'm looking for similarities with things that have at least have legs, right? And, mm -hmm. or, or limbs, right? So I would be looking, and if I were looking at uh, the commonality between lizard and anything else here, I would probably put shark as number five away from so the three most common are really quickly, just to make, because I'm it's a multiple choice exam, I have limited time, right? I would mm -hmm. want to use lizard, dolphin, and kangaroo to, to look at those three. So now let's go ahead and just do it just based on the art. Let's see if the DNA evidence backs it up. That doesn't always work, so you gotta be careful. But let's see, leucine, first position leucine. Looks like these guys all have leucine as their first position. Gee, amoeba doesn't, and either does sponge, the two furthest away, right? Do you agree? Yes. So I can I can quickly X these out. These are done. These are not the most, because they asked me uh, to compare which are the most closely related, right? So it's not, it's not gonna be, uh, it's not gonna be sponge or, uh, it's not going to be sponge or amoeba. All right, so next position has isoleucine. And you don't have to know the names. You can say iso, 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 and iso. So that doesn't help. The next position is proline, 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 and proline. But now earthworm is out, right? Mm -hmm. Isn't it interesting that it is working out the way I thought? Yeah, yeah so it's kind of cool. Asparagine is different, right? Why isn't it writing? I don't know. Okay, it's stuck. Sometimes it gets stuck. Uh, it's, no, not going to do it, huh? Okay. It's not writing. I don't know why. All right, finally. My pencil's done. I keep forgetting to charge the eye pencil. All right. So, uh, so let's go ahead and so, as I said uh, a minute ago, 
the next asparagine makes this one different. Uh, isoleucine makes this one different. Isoleucine makes that one different. Okay, so now the next one, the, of the ones that are left, I got proline, proline, uh, PRO, 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 and PRO, that's fine. The next one's FE, PHE, 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 and PHE, still not a help because we're looking for differences. It's always looking for the ones that are different, right? Always looking right. for the ones that are different. I L E isoleucine, 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 isoleucine. Next one's leucine, 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 and leucine, and leucine. The next one's leucine and leucine and leucine and leucine and leucine. Next one's serine, 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 and serine. Next one histine, histine. Again, we don't. You don't have to know. It's histine, histine, and. And we're looking to comparing to RG. Remember, we're looking at comparing them to this one, which is close. And this one says histamine. This one says arginine. So right. these histamines are all different. So these histines, this is makes these guys more closely related to each other than they are to our winner, which is this one. These two are the same, you see? So mm -hmm. lizards, lizards are most closely related to whom? sharks to sharks so i was actually wrong so lizards are so number five i would have put five in the wrong place if i wouldn't have looked at the dna and rna difference and it turns out that kangaroos cats and dolphins are a whole nother branch of the tree that sharks and lizards share a common ancestor so the tree, the way we would draw the tree, if this tree would be something like this, where we would draw, where amoeba would be here, right? And then as we drew it, we would have a sponge come off here. And then we would have to draw uh, a, a branch that came off and here would be kangaroo, uh cat and dolphin dolphin cat and kangaroo and then here would be shark and lizard so these these would share a common ancestor different from these three and this one and this one so i got close I got close by kind of rating them on my own and try to, I, but I would have got it wrong if I just went by how things looked, right? Right. So I had to I had to consider all the characters. So yeah, sharks and, and lizards, because they share all the arginine. I'm just going to put arginine. On the one, two, three, four, I'm sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, tenth position, tenth amino acid. All right, this is a quick note. In the 10th amino acid, there's arginine is present where the rest of them have histamine. All right, so again, that implies that they had a common ancestor which shared that, that gene, right? And right. these three had a common ancestor which shared that gene. All right, how do you think different amino acid sequences would affect the organs to explain your answer? Well, what would amino, different amino acids change? That it's so it would be so to write it. I'm just going to go ahead and answer it, which is a different amino acids lead to different proteins. Mm -hmm. okay. Different. Proteins, sorry about my, I'm writing with my, quickly with my finger and it's not very neat. Proteins lead to different traits. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. 
this difference in amino acid, the fact that they have arginine here versus the rest of these have histamine, that means their cytochrome C's are gonna be different. Now, does that mean they work better or worse? I don't know. It, I, I don't know what that means. It might not mean that there's much of a difference at all in function, but it could mean a difference in function, right? So different traits lead to different functions. So one example of this and a big picture would be lizards and birds. The scales in dinosaurs, in old dinosaurs, in, in a common ancestor between birds and the dinosaurs that are now extinct, and crocodiles and, and, and other lizards. Hello? Yeah, hello? Did, am I oh, muted? Okay, so I froze. Oh, okay. Uh, where, did I, where did you leave off? Where did we leave off? Are you still there? Um, just yeah, just you answering the um, the question. Okay, so bottom line: different amino acids lead to different proteins. Different proteins lead to different traits, and different traits lead to different functions. So when you talk about, like, for instance, the thought of feathers, feathers are adapted scales. They were scales, like on a fish or on some lizards, right? Where they're, right. I think maybe all lizards, but the those dinosaurs that had scales, those scales turned into things like feathers, and those feathers now are used to keep warm by birds. Use them to keep warm, to keep dry, and they also use them as to help them fly. Right, so feathers are very, are very light. They're water, they're water resistant. Uh, they're they're insulative because they're hollow, so they actually are amazing. Uh, uh, derived traits that they inherited from a common ancestor with crocodiles or snakes. So it's interesting that this change in amino and DNA, which led to change in amino acid sequence, led could lead to a difference in function and, of course, a different species being born. So let's go back a minute. And let's talk about clades. And then I think I've answered your questions, which I know it took a long time to do, but I just think it, it was necessary for you to get a full deep understanding. So let's take a look at this. Which of these would you circle and create a clade? And, the, and your teacher, uh, I'm sorry, what? Which group were you in? Did you have student teachers come in and speak to you? Yes. Okay. So you're, 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 then your teachers, your student teachers or your teachers, they talk to you about monophyletic groups and polyphyletic groups, which is good. I think that's a really good thing to know. Like groups that share all the traits and groups that share either one common ancestor or groups that don't share one common ancestor, right? So monophyletic right. group would share one common ancestor. So I could do this and that would be a monophyletic group and they share a common ancestor and all the traits that, and all the traits along the line here uh, uh, that came before it. Obviously they, they, they don't share the traits that come after, they only share the traits that come before that common ancestor. So that would be a monophyletic group. Or I could group, or I could group them differently. I could group them sort of like, I could take like these two and circle these two, circle something like that, where they're not including a, 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 a common ancestor, but they're including, they're kind of jumping around. They're skipping a couple, couple common ancestors. You can do that too. But the idea of a clade is, a, is simply a group that share a common ancestor. They share an evolutionary relationship. So this would be a common ancestor. This would be a clade. Uh, we, we could call uh, this clade here would, let me circle it. This clade here would be called an amniotic clade. So these are amniotes, creatures that have an amniotic egg. Uh, we could call these uh, the, the tetrapod group, right? Groups that, mm -hmm. have four, groups that have four legs for walking. Uh, we could call these the, the jaw group, groups that have jaws. 
we could call these, oops, we can call these the vertebrates, organisms that, and that's an actual clade, right? We call today vertebrates. The, those are groups of organisms that have backbones. And so we can, we can group, we can move these clades any which way we want, depending on which characters we want to look at, how far back in the evolutionary history we want to go. And obviously, obviously the closer they are, the more characters they share, the more DNA they share, the more likely they are to be similar. If that, does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's it. What, how do you feel better now about clades? Yes, way better. Okay, excellent. So if there's anything else you need, we can meet again tomorrow and every day this week. Whatever you need, just let me know. All right? Okay. All right, buddy. You have a good one. Okay, you too. Bye-bye.